All right, so in the last tutorial, we set up a basic Flask static app that included two endpoints. We had the welcome endpoints, and then we have the main URL or endpoints. So in this video, we'll be adding a basic login page for end users to log into. Now, since the code builds on the previous code, be sure you're up to speed by either going through the previous video, or you can download the code from the blog post. And you'll find both links in this video's description. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my terminal here. And I have my server running, so I'm going to hit Control-C to kill that. And then I also have my virtual environment activated. So to deactivate that or get out of the virtual environment, you can just type deactivate and then enter. So make sure that you are at the directory that's housing your Flask app, which should be flask-intro. And then go ahead and activate your virtual environment. So source, and then the name of the directory, and then bin, and then activate. Press enter. Now let's go ahead and open up our project in Sublime. And so let's go ahead and add the new route for the login page. So open up app.py. And we'll start with adding the route decorator where we uh, specify the URL. So add app. And then this is going to hit the login endpoint. We also need to add an argument for the HTTP methods. So comma, methods. These are going to go into a list. And then post. And so notice how the other directorators don't need this argument. We don't have methods here or methods here, in other words. And that's because by default, Flask assumes that the method is a GET request. So if you need to apply other methods to a route, then you need to explicitly add them in. So in this case, we need the GET method as usual, as well as POST so that end users can send a POST request with their login credentials to this login endpoint. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set up our function that the URL is mapped to. So we'll go ahead and call this login. And then I'm going to set a variable here of error and then set it to none. And you'll see why in just a second. And then let's go ahead and return a template login.html. And then we'll pass in that error message. Okay, so right now, based on the logic within this route, there's no way to handle a post request. All this is doing is rendering an HTML template and passing an error message to that template. So in order to handle a post request, we need to expand this function. So we can say if request.method, if that's equal to a post request, and then we want to do some sort of logic within here. And so in this case, since we have a form, we're going to basically test the input values to see if they're correct and if they are correct, then the user will be logged in. If they're incorrect, then we want to pass in an error message. So that's the, the username from the form, obviously. If that does not equal admin, or and that needs to be in quotes. And so do the same thing for password. So if either of them don't equal admin, then we're going to update the error message to um, invalid credentials. Please try again. And so then if they are both equal to admin, then we're going to go ahead and redirect the user to the main function, which is this one here. And so let me go ahead and update the imports. So we need redirect uh, URL for, and then also request. So basically we're saying here, if the method is post, then we need to test the data sent along with that post. So the username and the password from the form 
if either of them don't equal admin, then we issue an error. Otherwise, redirect the user to the home page. And it is sim as simple as that. So next we need to add our login.html template. And I'm gonna go and grab that from the repo here, which again is going to be in the video's description, a link to it. Uh, otherwise, just github.com forward slash real python forward slash flask intro. Uh, click on templates, click on login.html, and then let's go ahead and grab the HTML here. And I'm going to go ahead and create that login page. So I'm going to cd in the templates, touch login.html. Paste that in there. So now before we break down this template, let's just go ahead and test out the application. So I'm going to fire up the server, python app.py. Oh, I'm in my templates directory. Can't type today, or ever for that matter. So now let's go ahead and go to that login endpoint. And you can see that rendered the HTML for the login page. So first, let's go ahead and open up the Chrome Developer Tools. So right-click, inspect element, and then let's click the Network tab. Okay, so first, let's go ahead and test, um, send some incorrect data. So I'm just gonna send test and test one, two, three. Let's try and log in. You can see that the error message, invalid credentials, please try again, populated. You can see that the, the method was post and we got a 200 OK response. But let's dig a little bit deeper. So we can click this login URL here. And then on the headers tab, scroll down on here, you can see the actual values that were sent with the post request. You could see test and then test one, two, three, four for the password. And so that's the actual data that was sent. So let's go ahead and try this again and let's use the uh, correct credentials. So admin and admin, click login. First, you can see there's a 302 status code and that indicates that a redirect occurred and that just redirected us to this localhost 5000, which is just the main endpoint. And if we open up the uh, terminal here, you can see the exact same thing in the terminal. So we issued a POST request to this login endpoint, and Flask responded with a 302 status code, and then redirected us to this main URL, and then we got a 200 response from that. And then if we check the headers again, we should see admin and admin, and we do admin and admin. Cool, so let's go back to the code real quick for that template and just take a look at it. So probably the first thing that you will notice is some strange syntax here, right here, and then right here. So this first tag here, that's used for Python-like expressions such, such as conditionals and loops, while the double curly brace tag here is used for var variables or the results from an expression. And in this case, this is used for this error variable, which we passed in right here. So basically, if that error variable evaluates to not none, in other words, if there is an actual value there, then these paragraph tags are displayed along with the content right here. And, of course, this error variable will be replaced with the actual error message. So other than that, we have just a basic HTML form that uh, sends a post request along with the values, so the username, and then the password. And those values are just obtained from the input boxes. Now let's check one more thing in developer tools. So if we go back to the login page, and I'm going to do test, and then test again, click login, and this time let's go ahead and click the preview. So first you can see that the double curly braces with the, the error variable, 
was actually replaced with the actual error message. And then you can also see here the actual username and pass password values that were submitted. And so for more on this, check out the blog post. All right, so we quickly added a login page that users can log into. And there's obviously still much to be done with regard to user management, but this is probably a good stopping point for today. So be sure to check out the blog post for the full tutorial. Comment if you have questions, and thank you for watching.